Welcome to Back to Basics, which is aimed at providing a first look or a refresher at technical aspects of the Notes and Domino client server architecture. Notes and Domino are client and server respectively in a client server architecture. They communicate with each other using a protocol called Notes Remote Procedure Call or NRPC. As a protocol, NRPC is situated atop TCP IP in the OSI and TCP IP model. For those who are not familiar with the OSI and TCP IP models, they are comprised of a number of layers. Each layer builds upon the lower layer, layer 1, with the bottom layer consisting of the electronic circuit transmission technologies of the network. The layers go up from there, with each layer adding more and more levels of abstraction up to layer 7 for the OSI model. The difference between the OSI model and the TCP IP model is that the OSI model has 7 layers, whereas the TCP IP model has 4 layers. In the TCP IP model, the physical and data link layers are grouped into a single network interface layer. Conversely, the session, presentation, and application layers are grouped into a single application layer. As we can see in this slide, there is a good correspondence between the different models. For NRPC, it is located at the session layer in the OSI model, atop the transport layer for TCP and network layer for IP. A good way to remember the OSI model is to remember either or both of the following mnemonics. All people swing to need data processing from top to bottom, or people do not throw sausage pizza away from bottom to top. Network ports are provided by the TCP or UDP protocols at the transport layer. Port numbers are used to determine what protocol incoming traffic should be directed to. Ports essentially allow a single host with a single IP address to run network services. Each port number identifies a distinct service and each host can have 65,536 ports per IP address. Port use is regulated by the Internet Corporation for assigning names and numbers, ICANN. ICANN provides three categories for ports. Category 1 for ports numbers 0 to 1023 are well-known ports assigned to common protocols and services. Category 2 for ports numbers 1024 to 49151 are registered ports assigned by ICANN to a specific service. Category 3 for ports numbers 49152 to 65535 are dynamic private high ports and these ports are used by any service on an ad hoc basis. These ports are assigned when a session is established and released when the session ends. HTTP uses port 80 and HTTP with Secure Sockets Layer SSL uses port 443. NRPC uses port 1352. The port number remains the same for NRPC whether the data is encrypted or not or whether the data is compressed or not. So this said, for a Nuts client to be able to communicate with the server, it needs the following. TCP IP networking provided by the OS and NRPC networking provided by the client and server. When a server is configured, its fully qualified domain name, or FQDN, is provided in its server document. This is the same as its DNS name. It is typically the server's common name, DCN, plus the DNS domain name. So if we have a server whose name is CN equal HCL1, slash OU equals SRV, slash O equal HCL, or HCL1 slash SRV slash HCL in abbreviated format, and the DNS domain name is HCL.com, then we would have hcl1.hcl.com as the server's FQDN. Typically, the common name will resolve in DNS. So if you enter hcl1 as the server name, the domain name will be appended, and an IP address will be returned based on a lookup for hcl1.hcl.com. If DNS resolution doesn't work, the workstation will look for the entry in the etc host file. If this fails, a lookup will be done leveraging connection documents in the personal name and address book, names.nsf. Failing that, the client will query known servers in the domain to try to get the IP address on the server so it can connect to it. But let's say it's your first server and it is a test server at that. Problem is, one, there's no possibility to register it in DNS, two, you don't want to edit the etc host file, and three, you don't want to create manually connection documents. Well, there's a cool trick that you can use. Press Ctrl O or do File Open HCL Notes Application and then enter the IP address of the Domino server. The client will connect with this IP address, and if it is successful, it will create a connection document in the personal name and address book on behalf of the user. From this point on, the connection document will point the way to that server and be privileged for connecting to that server. So far, so good. But what happens if, after a period of problem-free communication, you suddenly can't connect to the Domino server? There are a couple ways of troubleshooting this. The first is to make sure that you have network connectivity. You can verify that by opening your preferred web browser and entering a URL like hcl.com or google.com. Alternatively, you can open the command line prompt on Windows or the terminal on Linux Mac OS and enter ping www.hcl.com or ping www.google.com. Ping 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 is also a good choice. 
If the above works, then it's time to see if the problem is at the NRPC protocol level. As we explained, NRPC uses port 1352, so you can check to see if you can reach the server at the TCP IP level by doing a ping of the server's name, if it is in DNS or listed in VPC host file, as in ping HTL1 or ping HTL1.htl.com, or by doing a ping of the server's IP address, as in ping 192.168.1.5. If you can reach the server, you can use Telnet to see if the server is listening on port 1352 as it should by issuing the Telnet command. This is done by typing Telnet, the name or the IP address of the server, followed by space and 1352. If the server is listening, the screen will go blank. Personally, I myself prefer using a small utility called tcping.exe that does both a ping and a Telnet at the same time given a specific port. The nomenclature of the command is the same. You do tcping with the name of the server or the IP address, followed by 1352. If the server is in listening and nothing happens when using the port, then raise a ticket to get the server checked. But what if the server is listening and you still can't connect to the server? While there is utility built into the client that will come in handy and provide additional information. To access it, select from the client's pull-down menu, File Preferences. Then, in the Preferences dialog box, click on the Notes Port Navigation item. Make sure TCP IP is selected and click the Trace button. This will open a dialog. Enter the name of the server or its IP address and click the Trace button. The client will proceed through all the steps it can to connect to the server and will detail the results in the dialog box whether successful or not. If the connection is unsuccessful, you can click the Copy button. The trace text will be copied to the clipboard. With that information in the clipboard, you can paste it into a text editor and then call the help desk with this information to explain what the client did and what details at each step. On the right hand side, we see an unsuccessful trace where despite different attempts, the DOS client was ultimately not able to connect to a Domino server. Sometimes changes made to the server can result in problems connecting to it. In such circumstances, it is usually detailed in the trace text. We'll close this small presentation here with the understanding that, of course, there's a lot more to explain on the topic of NRPC networking, such as how the client cache works, how to get the NRPC protocol to encrypt and or compress traffic, how to see what is being communicated back and forth, as well as many other things. But that will have to wait for another five minute tech video. For now, I thank you for your time and then hope that this video properly got you oriented on NRPC communications and made you more familiar on how the Node client and Domino server communicate with each other.